Hey guys, and welcome to a showdown featuring two legendary champs. We have Unlimited Power, also known as Papa Palpatine, taken on Park Map as the Lizard Man and Vampire Counts showdown shall commence. So I guess you guys may begin a little bored of just seeing consistent Wood Elf and Skaven play, which I'm sure every content creator is currently doing for the new DLC. So before we get back to that good old stuff, you are going to be dropping a bit of a different replay today from the current patch of the game. So for the forces of the Lizardmen, I've spoken about this matchup quite a lot recently and how I think the death blob for the Lizardmen, which made this battle or um, kind of showdown very one-sided, no longer works. Vampire Count players have kind of cottoned onto this and know how to stop it. So I think this type of build is the way to go and that's why I want to highlight it here today. So we have triple chameleon skinks in the front line. There's not much on the roster of the Vampire Counts that can threaten these bad boys, catch them effectively, and they can just do decent consistent damage from long range, poison and alone the stats of all the enemy. We also have a double Salamander Hunting Packs, my favourite Fire Doggos. No Umbral Tide, sadly, but still, these guys do fantastic burst damage, and a lot of the undead roster is, of course, weak to fire, being undead and all that scary stuff. Help and protect of this skirmish call, you have triple cold one spear riders, very good in this matchup, they can do decent damage to a lot of the large entities, single targets and kind of Cycle charge down front lines as well. Of course, Blood Knights are a little bit scary for them, but if there is no Blood Knights or if you can get good support with the Salamanders and Chameleon Skinks, they can trade rather effectively against them. We have Triple Saurus Warriors as well for a rather slim front line, but they'll be able to chew through an infinite number of zombies and skeletons without too much trouble. We do have a Skink Priest of Beast coming in with Manticore Summon and Flock of Doom. And for a Lord, we have a Saurus Old Blood. Not quite as gangster as Krokgar himself, but still a mighty roar on his lips. He's uh, certainly ready to go. He has the Horn of Kygor, Stand Your Ground, and Amulet of Itzel. All very good items and abilities. So really fun build, looking to out-skirmish the Counts and allow the Saurus to grind through the front line. Now for the forces of the Vampire Counts, led by the legendary Park Map, we have a ton of zombies in the front line and it's not a real vampire counts build if you don't have zombies in my humble opinion fleshy sacks of unhappiness which are going to be here to just absorb damage and allow these crypt horrors which are coming in a secondary line to really pack a punch do some damage and a saturate on top of them in the secondary line we also have skeleton spearmen as well once again there to just take a pound in and uh, you know allow the crypt horrors to really do the work as well as these other large entities and evil creatures for these large entities and evil creatures, we have a corpse car of Unholy Lodestone. We also have a double Banshee, which is almost a must and guaranteed pick in this matchup. There's not too much magic damage on the Lizardmen roster, unless you do indeed Brenna Slan or the very expensive Temple Guard. And these guys can simply you know, dart away from the Star Chamber Guardians and the like. We also have a Mortis Engine, which looks ethereal, and I stand by this every single time I accidentally call it ethereal, which it is not indeed ethereal, but it is weakness, uh, have weakness to fire, of course, so Salamander's certainly going to be trying to get their chops wet on this bad boy. Up in the skies, we do have a ton of Felbats as well, and these could be a real problem for those Salamanders, good at hunting them down and distracting them and stopping their kind of arc of fire, while the rest of the army kind of grinds out that front line. We do have a double Vargulf as well, and they are relatively fast, of course, can be healed up, have regeneration, and can do decent damage to some of those large, pesky uh, carnosaurs and the like. For leadership, we do have Henrik Kemmler as well on his bad-to-the-bones-looking undead horse. It's such a cool armor scheme all round. Coming in, of course, with the Summon to Krell, we have Cloak of Mist and Shadows, Undeath Resurgence, Invocation of Nahek, Raise Dead, Valhance, Dance Macabre, all of that good stuff that is to be expected. So on comes the undead horde, plodding its way towards the uh, little bit quicker Lizardmen lines here. Chameleon Skinks are going to be leading the charge, of course, they are currently stalked, but the Felbats should be able to see them relatively quickly, as the Salamanders do push up as well, and the Asaurus kind of holding the line, so it looks like the Lizardmen army trying to push forward and do a little bit of a fighting retreat here back to the uh, stalwart Saurus Warriors. Saurus Old Blood is going forward as well as the Cold One Spear Riders, just to offer a little bit of protection to these hunting packs. Felbats have now discovered that the Chameleon Skinks are going to unleash a few blow darts their way, and honestly, it's not the worst uh, target, so it's not going to be good from a cost perspective, but if you can get rid of the Felbats early on, that's going to give you way more battlefield control. And as you can see, there is no Blood Knights from this Vampire Counts build, which could have been a bit of a problem here, but you know, again, as I said early on, Cold One Spear Riders are pretty good at forcing those guys wide as well. 
Salanders are starting to push forward now, starting to weave their way through their smaller brethren. And it's going to be interesting to see where they do line up their shots. Looks like the Mortis engine is uh, kind of dawdling behind, which is good for the vampire counts, as they don't want it to be targeted down early on. Looks like Salamander hunting packs are going to be raining fire down upon the Crypt Horrors, which is a decent target, as uh, they do go down pretty quickly, and uh, it's going to stop them being healed up too much, although you can see the Salamanders have been forced back at this point. And because of all these uh, lovely lodestones and the like around them, these guys are currently regenerating quite nicely. Felbats are getting obliterated at the moment by Chameleon Skink, so going for a suicide charge before they do disappear into the dust. The other Felbats are lurking as well, but it's a rather timid approach so far from the undead, although it looks like the Banshees are starting to get a little bit aggressive now. Source Old Blood does come into feast on some Felbats as well, as the undead hordes still kind of uh, bumble forwards in their undead fashion. Look at these little zombies, they do such a weird walking animation, but it looks uh, pretty damn cool as well. Felbats are still trying to dart down where possible, but being picked apart here by those uh, pesky chameleon skinks. But the other two Felbats are looking relatively healthy. They're super cheap as well, very expendable, so it's uh, not too bad to see one unit go down. At least it is wasting some of the fire pressure from the chameleon skinks and forcing back the salamanders, so the undead hordes can get a little bit closer each time. Looks like Crypt Horrors at once again have been the uh, focus fire here of attention. As so, though, yeah, they're getting absolutely obliterated by those. Uh, Lizard Doggo's there doing some really decent work. Cryptors are crumbling now. One more volley should be enough to finish them off as well. And that's really going to help out these Saurus Warriors. Cryptors, of course, can beat them down very effectively. But without their support, the uh, Spearmen and Zombies are really going to be doomed here quite badly. Saurus Old Blood is uh, taking a little bit of friendly fire. They'll do a poke up the bum. But it's going to be charging forward now and uh, staring down at those pesky zombies. Needs to be careful though. Banshees can do massive damage to him in sustained combat for a good duration. Crypt Horrors are now completely gone from this world, crumbling into dust and uh, yeah, faces in the mud, not good for them at all. Let's uh, see who the Saurus um, do we start to engage against and who the Salamanders will focus fire. Felbats have got onto a good target here though, really annoying this Salamander hunting pack, but there is some Cogwon Spear Riders nearby who I'm sure will intercept as Saurus Warriors do engage in the front line. They are supported by the Saurus Old Blood here as well as some Spear Riders coming in to the fray, as the uh, Crypt Horrors here would be a big pain to the Saurus, but all the way along the battle line, uh, the uh, battle is full underway now. Banshee though is going to be darting in the midst of the Saurus being a massive pain, and funnily enough, we have some zombies and skeleton warriors going for a bit of a flank. Not the fastest flankers in the world, but particularly sticky, trying to push their way into the salamanders. But then come the cold one spear riders with a lance in charge instantly, making these uh, zombies start to waver. And those velociraptors will feast happily tonight. With a lovely zombie summon in the back line is once again going to push back the hunting packs. Hunting packs are relatively fast though and should of course be able to escape the uh, undead type. Ferromanticore has been summoned and it looks like the mortis engine is the current focus of attention. Invocation of the Heck has, has gone down as well as an undeath resurgence boost in the leadership and melee defense of all these nearby troops. Looks like the uh, Mantis are actually really struggling to get through there properly onto the Mortis engine as the Saurus Old Blood goes balls deep here. Horn of Kaigua has been popped giving that added melee attack and leadership really trying to push in and focus that Mortis engine. This is a really expensive tool and you don't want to do so much damage to it for it to get away. Fantastic pressure by the Lizardmen although has it cost them too much. Source Old Blood is now getting pounded down by Double Vargle as well as the Banshee, but the Source Old Blood has massive mass, and for some reason, Castles in general are really going to push in through troops. It'll be very interesting to see if they can still do that in the next patch. Chameleon Skinks are still looking relatively healthy ammunition-wise. Good to see them as well taken off fire at will, I believe, so they don't waste any ammunition on pesky zombies and the like. Podwin Spear Riders are helping out the Salamander Hunting Pack bros in the back line, hunting down these zombies. For the most part, it looks like the Salamanders are going to be relatively online, which is looking pretty good. However, that Saurus Old Blood does have to pop a foe seek in order to escape here. Incredibly beat up, but he did a fantastic job taking so much pressure as well as uh, getting rid of that pesky Morpheus engine. Cold One Spear Riders are now going to try to surround the Vargulf as another flock of Doom does indeed come in. They'll do some okay damage to the Banshees. Yes, of course, they are. Uh, you know, magical beasts and whatnot, but uh, it's not particularly designed to kill the entities and things like that. Source Old Blood does have Amulet of Itzel as well as Stand or Ground for tanks and damage and once again jump into the fray. Looks like he's trying to focus down the Banshee, but a Slippery has been popped and he's uh, suddenly on to pull back rather quickly. But the Volgulf is getting lit up at the moment. Invocation of the Heck does come down to try and keep him healed. The Source Old Blood got him there, did some massive damage, but now all his. Uh, 
amulets and the like have disappeared, so he certainly needs to get out of there as quickly as possible. Chameleon Skinks pushing up with the Salamanders, trying to do some nice pressure. But well, it looks like they are focusing down on the wrong Vargles at the moment. Maybe because they are confident the Cold One Spear Riders can finish off this secondary one here. Cold One Spear as well, clean up the back line as the uh, very brave Saurus Old Blood, who's been charging into the thick of combat, covered in blood, has uh, had to pull back here. Still, 1,200 health is no joke, and the firing line is well and truly online. So, without the um, Fell Bats anymore, as they have been dealt with, the Lizardmen have complete map control at this point. They can pick and choose their fights and get all the value possible out of these ranged troops. Especially if the Vargoths do indeed go down. So Banshees are tearing their way through these poor Cold One Spear Riders. Where the Saurus Warriors are just absolute lawnmowers here. Huge kills across the board. 165, 110. Chewing their way through and just being a really solid backbone here. And with no Mortis Engine to drag those guys down. They're a bit, a little bit of a pain. Cold Ones are now being terrified of Wayne. Looks like the Old Blood considering coming back in for another charge. Banshees are swooping and dancing their way towards him. They're going to be poking him right in the rear there, which is not good for him at all. And he's actually taking huge damage, and that is going to be enough to break him. So perhaps a good way back in the game for the undead. It's been a rather long game, and the balance power is still very even, slightly in favour of the Lizardmen Masters at the moment. Taurus Warriors are still slowly grinding down rather effectively. Where are our... Uh, favourite salamander hunting packs. Looks like they are falling back now, perhaps trying to run away from a summon or something which has disappeared. And over on the left side, we have another unit as well. So they're going to be coming back into the fray. Still half ammunition left on them. Should do some pretty decent work. Krell is just chilling and vibing in the middle of the battlefield at the moment. I think he did some pretty decent damage to the Saurus Old Blood and is uh, yeah, just having a uh, whale of a time. Looks like he's currently asleep. It's uh, pretty weird from him there. Anyway, this other Vargulf is now getting absolutely annihilated by Salamander Hunting Packs and Chameleon Skinks as well coming in, and he is starting to deteriorate as well. Source Old Blood has rallied to the cause and once again gone for the Leroy Jenkins approach, a uh, very valuable and uh, good approach in general. As he comes in, Hall of Kygor and stands your ground and flings that Vargulf to the ground and roars victory and a battle cry for Lustria. But he does take some <laughs> big friendly fire there as well. Salamander's going to be a little bit ashamed of that one, but he is pounding down this Vargal for those solo health as well, trying to pin him in place. A little bit of friendly fire once again, but the Vargulf is taking massive damage as the Cold One Spear Eyes rally to their heroic leader, coming to take on the Vargal. But a rain of fire comes in, and down that the old blood goes, burnt alive by his own troops. But it's a worthwhile sacrifice pinning in that last Vargal and deleting it from the field. And now this is real map dominance from the Lizard Men. Balance Pass still not completely gone, as there is a decent hero court left alive, but Henrik Hemmler's not the type of character to put a game on his back and, you know, solo in combat. The Double Banshees have a huge amount of work here to do if the Undead are to get back into this. There is so many dinos left on the field. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here, as it looks like it is mainly going to be, uh, you know, use up all our ammunition on Heinrich Kemmler, which is a good idea. Cold One Spear Rise getting in here as well, with the Banshees going to try to chase them down and do some decent armor piercing damage and Henrik Kemmler is now back up at full health Flock of Doom's coming in because you know there's no Manticore summons left on the field but Henrik Kemmler is going to be going down here just a consistent firepower as you can see this is some really good uh, top tier play by Papa Palpatine as well leaving his Saurus Warriors you know, out wide leaving a lot of his units just chilling and idle to uh, boost up their um, stamina keep them fighting and uh, just use up all his ammunition so not over committing to a fight just yet he'll wait to the opportune moment and that's when all these zombie summons and stuff have been dealt with as well no need to engage whilst they are active so there's a as soon as they're gone of course there's gonna be no more summons because there is no more heinrich kemmler so I'm going to fast forward here again as we see all the zombies simply get cleared up. And these poor Banshees are going to be in the middle of an absolute rain of firepower. The Chameleon Skinks are relatively low on ammunition at this point. The Salamanders still have plenty left in the tank. And with the balance pile going so far against the Banshees, even with Slippery popped, these uh, ladies will start to crumble relatively soon. And even the Salamanders come in here for a bit of a lick and an attack in uh, close quarters. As these poor little Banshees are going to start to uh, disappear into the undead realms from once they came completely surrounded by a horde of angry saurus cold one spear riders and the like you can see the uh, little crumbling animations Bundy coming off them as well as those red puffs of dust do start to uh, help them disintegrate and yeah that is just a sea of uh, angry angry dinos coming at these poor ladies to death i say poor ladies they are banshees so they probably did deserve it 
And that's going to be a very well fought victory. A very close game as well. Still a decent amount of Lizardman forces left on the field at the end. But it certainly could have swung either way. Nice assassination as well on the Saurus Old Blood, who paid a massive amount of work though, tanking so much damage. And um, as I said during the battle, I'm really interested to see how the changes to mass are going to switch up this meta. Maybe it will reverse a little bit because Terror Geist and the like aren't going to be so good at pulling through Temple Guard. And uh, maybe the Saurus Old Blood and so forth isn't going to be so good as well at escaping. But we'll have to wait and see. Who knows? And wait, huge kills across the board from the Saurus Warriors. A really solid backbone all round. But uh, I think the you know, MVPs here, definitely those Salamander hunting packs and Old Blood doing massive burst damage. And you can see a lot of the heavy hitters really kind of struggle to get decent kills on the undead roster anyway guys i hope you did enjoy this battle if you did feel free to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe for more total war warhammer content massive shout out to both papa palpatine and park map true uh, two true champs of dbd there going head to head so we are gonna have some more dlc content later today i'm considering doing a bit of an ungrim breakdown as well maybe just trying him out against you know star dragons and uh, dread soarings and that type of stuff to see how he now does fare Anyway, guys, until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.